Good evening and welcome back to Football Manager 2024 and the Creator Club. We're here for Season 4. We didn't get sacked at the end of Season 3. I was a bit worried we might by not getting promoted at the end of Season 3, but we didn't. We survived. We come back. We are here for Season 4. And let's go, guys. We're here for the first game, but before we obviously jump into the first game, I've got a little bit of kind of catching up to give everyone to give you guys during the preseason everything that's changed the squad the tactics everything all the friendlies i've played um, a little bit of everything coming your way um so the first thing i guess we'll look at is the squad more or less the squad is the same you know more or less not entirely we have made a few signings so what's pr has reacted well okay good um mark foden is a goalie we brought in um to the squad and i'll show you using the goalie settings that i the goalie view that i have created so what i did guys is i've gone in and i've created views for all of the players and then a contract morale and form view at the end of it at the top of it actually um just so that i can easily see how players are playing their best stats for their best positions blah 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 stuff like that the general stuff and that I feel like I've been missing out on in the last few seasons as I just kind of start the game and learn the game again. You know, so I feel like a little bit more confident this season, a little bit more knowledgeable, I suppose, going into this season. And we've made a few signings kind of trying to use that knowledge a little bit. Um, the first one, um, no worries. The first one is Mark Foden coming in as a goalie. So if we take change the view to goalkeepers. Mark Foden's in there because he's got very nice, um, kind of well-rounded stats as as a goalie, like as the as the goalie that we want to be using more or less for the rest of the season. You know, kind of kind of no point no point hiding from that. It's gonna be gonna be our best bet to use to use our best goalie, and I think we found a, a better goalie here than we had last season. Uh, in Michael Webb and in Stephen Mann. Uh, there's actually probably a few of these that I can get rid of. Um, actually, no, maybe not. Maybe not. What we'll do is we'll just kind of cut it like that a little bit so that everything is everything is on screen. Nice. There we go. So these are the goalie stats. He's, he's very well-rounded. You can see lots of nines, lots of tens. Whereas if we look at... We look at the other goalies they've got some high stats and then they've got some really low stats so he's a very well-rounded player that's why we're paying him 1.8 thousand uh well 1800 1 1.8 thousand and um, because he's going to be a really really important player for us he's going to be our starting goalie more or less for the rest of this uh the rest of this season this whole season four and we'll see how long that kind of goes for us because we have got a lot of players on multiple deals multiple years for example if i hit the expire button we've got a lot of players on two-year deals um paprio or decoya sweeney da costa Arusu, and crosby and um, but if i quickly and the reason for that is that hopefully if we do get promoted fine that's great but we'll still have a good chunk of our players that we bring with us and um, money wise we might struggle again but we knew that was going to be the case either way we knew that was going to be the case either way a lot of these players are getting appearance fees. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And uh, I've actually made one mistake in the preseason, and that is signing Zaid Zamoran, um, who has a really, really nice finishing stat, um, but not a lot else, to be honest. Not a lot else. So if we take a look at his finishing stat, he's just here. We'll highlight him real quick. He's got good finishing, good natural um natural fitness and good acceleration and decent pace but his strength is two you know he's dribbling is five so i feel like i've kind of made made a little bit of a mistake with that signing um which is fair you know i'm allowed to make mistakes i i, I wish i wasn't ever making any mistakes but that's kind of not realistic uh to be honest with you but that that's part of the game you know we're gonna we're gonna learn things as we go along as we kind of get back into football manager i haven't played great deal of football manager outside of this save that we're currently playing you know so there's always a, there's always more to learn and i'm definitely going to be learning a lot more as a, as we do progress through the seasons 
Um, so that's one mistake I've kind of made. We're paying him 1.9, which is quite high. So what I've done is I've put him on the loan list and the transfer list. And we're trying to we're trying to get rid of him, basically. We're trying to get rid of him. And we've currently got three under 18 players who are being paid. Um, because I didn't actually realize this, but the under 18s will still play their matches even if I don't have the full kind of under 18 squad there for them. So for example, what I mean by that is they've lost two games in the league already, but they did manage to score a goal against uh against Maidstone's under 18s. But the all the whole team is being filled up by kind of 15, 16 year old, 16 year old Bruno Landon, Charlie Spear in 15, you know, uh, Vizarellis 15. So I didn't actually know that was what was, was going to happen. I didn't realize that was what happens. You don't have the full squad in there. Um, we don't have any under 21s fixtures, which is probably good because I wouldn't know what players would even go in that either. You know, it's so we're kind of keeping it a little bit more contained this year than we did last year, finance wise and stuff like that. Like I'm trying to learn and Last year, I probably made a few mistakes that were kind of silly mistakes, but we're trying to learn from them. That's all we can do. Um, one thing to say is that Cole Andrews is being listed for transfer, like to get rid. Uh, just because his stats aren't all that for me. They're not all that. Like the low strength isn't great. The natural fitness, pace, acceleration, dribbling, they're all pretty good. But the finishing and the strength aren't great, which is... Which is... I don't know, maybe I'm being a bit kind of too too jumpy on which uh, which stats I'm focusing on, but I am trying to focus on I'm trying to focus on the important stat being strength for strikers. Strength and then probably looking at pace and acceleration and then maybe looking at finishing. But if I'm being honest, everything I've read, everything I've learned is that the finishing stat isn't as important as I might think it is. Strength that is. If a player is strong and is able to hold on to the ball, then we'll be able to uh, generate chances anyway. So with that in mind, this is the team I've picked. Another signing is Harry Sweeney. Um, I don't think there's any other signings. Ryan Crosby was a youth player that we have brought up. Um, so that wasn't really a signing so much. Um, everyone else is kind of players that we've had around the club for a good long while that aren't on contracts but they are in the club and um, i don't mind having so many it's not really a bad thing it's not really a bad thing at all if i want to kind of rotate players every now and then i've got good players that can can come in try things out try players out in different positions try players out doing this doing that blah 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 you know different stuff but it is this is what i mean it's quite concerning that our starting striker has a finishing stat of six um and then our second best striker and third best are six and seven. They're a midfielder and a right back. We've been using Dean Hannamore as the left back, but but yeah, it's quite it's quite it's quite interesting. But it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Um, into the tactics now. So we've got two tactics this year, not a plan A, B, C, blah 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 like we did last year. We've only got two tactics. The first is positive attack. Now the five three two. I'm not sure how positive the attack is going to actually be, uh, but it's more about this is our goal scoring tactic. This is our when we want to score goals, we go to this tactic. We be positive, we go to this tactic. It's all about counter, but it's all about high press as well. So it's a bit of a mix. I don't know if it will change as the season goes on. It might, it might not, but it's direct counter attacking football and uh Shooting on site, just generating chances as much as we can. Um, that's actually in incorrect. It should be on positive. That's also why it's called positive. Um, it shouldn't be on very defensive because the second tactic, contain, that is our defensive, hold the line, we'll take what we've got tactic. So one positive, you can see the only real change is the wingers move up. You know, when they come back, on, when we go on to contain, they come back and we set into like an eight at the back kind of situation, which is is quite crazy. You might you might think, but it is what it is. That's I don't, I don't know if it's it's great if it's accurate or you know if it's going to be feasible at the moment. That's the tactic we're going for. Oh, you can have a quick look at the kind of actual tactics I've chosen, the actual instructions, like 
direct passing into space run of the defense if you can shoot on sight and uh play wide play wide on the counter high press and stay on feet and then we've got a low block stay on feet hold shape instead of counter and then shorter passing dribble less be more disciplined lower the tempo but again still we are playing wide so there we go those are the tactics guys i don't think I need to talk much more about that training wise i've decided to try and keep things a little bit a little bit more chill uh, training wise so what i've got is i've got my schedule one that i actually made a couple seasons back and it's mostly a tactical defending and recovery schedule that's what it is it's all about my players trying to learn the tactics that we've got the match tactics in their tactical um there's another tactical somewhere i think but i can't quite find no match tactics match practice tactical and then defending defending outfield recovery sessions and then two big fitness sessions before the game on saturday and then a rest on the sunday um yeah because that's something that did hinder us last year as we got to the end of the season we were getting injuries we were losing important players and at the end of last season we were losing games and i was getting frustrated because i didn't know how to combat it but this season hopefully it'll be a bit different hopefully We'll be able to keep the momentum running through the season through from start to finish that's the aim that's hopefully what we can do because i want to get promoted this season this season right now now we have played some friendlies we have played some friendlies you can see the amount of friendlies we've played i've played is that 11 friendlies i think that is indeed 11 friendly games we started with a 2-1 loss and this was actually when i was playing a very different tactic very different tactic this was an attempt to play some possession football and it was not working we only scored via a penalty then we did get a draw a fair draw we played well then we got absolutely smacked and again we only scored because of a penalty now i'm not quite sure if i'll be able to see the match stats of these games but the xg we were really low we were really low there and we were actually lower than hilltop Again, if we look at this game here, our XG 1.28, 3.21. We were generating five chances a game. Not very many at all. Six shots, XG of 1.4. And again, that's because two of these chances are penalties. You know, a, a penalty XG is like, I don't know, 0.9 or whatever it is, according to the computer. So it was really, really, I don't know, trying to play possession football, but it was so negative. We weren't getting the ball forward creating chances scoring goals from from open play so what did i do i went to the tactic that we've currently got i changed things up i arranged a load of friendlies against teams that are in the league that we're going to be playing in that we played against last year and things started to change we went three nil against british airways we went three nil against afc kesgrave we then drew against jc tackleway in a game that was I don't know, not, I wouldn't say frustrating, but we had 20 shots, a much, much higher XG, and somehow we didn't get the win. So, yeah, I, I suppose you could say frustrating, but because it's a friendly, you're not really worried about it. I wasn't really worried about it. But then, we've gone on a run of five wins against teams that are in the league. A 4-0, 2-1, a 1-0, a 5-1, and another 1-0. One nil, one and if I look at these XGs, they're going to be higher. 1.4, 15 shots generated. In this one, it'll be crazy. It'll be 3.2, but 21 shots generated. We started to generate so many more chances. 15 to a 1.4. Take a look at the Hilltop game. It's going to be high again. 17 to a 1.98. And again, we only won 2-1, but the fact that we were just generating chance after chance playing on this or up, we'll hold our position and then go and then send the pacey players the strong players at the defenders we will generate chances against sydney we did the same thing again 14 chances we put four of them in we were three nil up at half time so in the second half for most of these games we went to the contain tactic we played the first half aggressive positive try and hit him on the counter try and play direct football and score some goals and then when we had the lead and we had control, we hit contain in the second half. And we tried to save our fitness. We tried to build a bit more possession. 
We tried to just slow the game down, hold on to our, our, onto our lead, and it's worked five times out of five. And then this month, and then the draw against JC Tackleway is a bit of an outlier where we generated so many chances, but we couldn't score, you know, and that is going to happen every now and then. That's just going to happen. Nothing we can do about that. So I won't lie. I do have a lot more confidence going into this season. And I have picked a team that I think is going to be able to really, really hit the ground running, get a good few wins under our belt and start to play Start to kind of roll through the games, win, 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 scoring goals, scoring lots of goals. And uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go into the first game now, guys. Hit the match preview, kick off, skip, hit the pause button. And now I would like to go back to the key highlights. Match speed during highlights stays the same, but we'll slow down the match speed everywhere else. And hit play. So this is our first league game. We're straight into it, guys. No preseason this season. On camera, it's all off camera. I hope I've done a decent job of explaining my thinking, my tactics, everything I've done off season. Um, but I didn't want to do it all on camera because it was a lot of work. You know, it was a good couple of hours, a good few hours of creating the views for our squad selection, um, looking at players I want to sign, looking at stats and this and that. But well, what's happened there? We've been given a penalty in the first minute. Oh my word, it's going to be Russell Short who takes the penalty, I believe. It is indeed Russell Short, the captain. He has kept the captaincy, I will not lie, and he's put it in. What a start to the season. It took a minute. It took a minute, if that, to win a penalty, score the goal, go 1-0 up. And, uh, you know, take control of this game a little bit. We're going straight back into another highlight, though. Wow, okay, okay. So, AFC Yule, is it? I can't actually remember if it's AFC Yule. Um, take a look at the table real quick. Yeah, it is AFC Yule. Um, they are a new team in the in the division. I think there's actually a few new teams in the division just because of the way the leagues are kind of structured. Um, so Kensington Dragons have been like moved across. They're on the same level. Um, Indian Gymkhana Club. Um, if we take a look at their history, competition wise. And they're the same, actually, I think. Oh, wait, no, sorry. I need to go overview. Yeah, they're the same as well. They've been moved across divisions rather than up or down. Just because of the way the structure of these leagues works in this game, I believe. Um, that things are just going to go play. Their clubs are going to move left and right as well as up and down. Just because of the sheer number of clubs that there are. Oh, there we go. It's a goal back early. But FC Yule, that's not what we wanted. Probably wanted a bit tighter defense on on our man there. But this is such an early... We're so early in the game. Another highlight already. It looks like a three highlights in a row from kickoff here, which is quite crazy. Quite crazy. Um, Another change that we're going to make this season, guys, um, compared to last season, is that we're going to play the games a little bit slower. We're going to try and... Put in a little bit more detail into how we're playing. Ray Booth through, shoots it wide. That's unlucky, but it's a good chance created nonetheless. And again, look, we've got another highlight. Lots of highlights early in this game. Nethercott wins the header. Boo loses it, but it's gone forward. And the new signing, the new goalie, Foden, will take control and play it out to Papril, who is carrying an injury, so we will keep an eye on that. But it's only a bruised injury, not a, uh, you know, not nothing... And a dramatic, dramatic, what a save, what an effort from Ray Boo. So Ray Boo has been put in the side um, because his strength stat is quite high. And his finishing stat is also, like, well, actually, I'm not sure if his finishing stat's great. His strength stat is quite high. So I'm hoping that he can really boss defenders a little bit more. And, uh, you know, well, look at that. Every team is drawing. And if we have one one player who's kind of bossing defenders a little bit more and another player who's able to... Oh, there we go. We've scored another one. We've scored another one. Isaac gets his first ever London Greens goal. What a, what a way to go. 10 minutes in, we've got the 2-1 lead. And this is kind of what I mean by the name of that tactic being positive tactic. We score a lot more goals with this tactic. Than, um, than we were at the end of last season. It felt like at the end of last season, no matter what I was doing, no matter what I was tinkering with, we just could not, could not play 
positive football. We couldn't get the ball up the field. We could barely hold on to possession. Hopefully this season, the longer we play, you know, the better we will get at holding on to a bit of possession. But the idea is just to keep scoring goals. And basically, if I can score three goals before halftime and I'm three nil up, or in this case, maybe three one up, I will then just play the second half absolutely chill. We'll calm it down. As I say that, we have gone 3-1 up. And it's only 12 minutes. It's 12 minutes and we've gone 3-1 up. So it is, this is what I mean. If we can score loads and loads and loads of goals early in the game, just kill the game, put the game to bed as early as possible, um, and then just sit and contain. That's what I'm aiming for. That's what I want. I don't, I don't want to be kind of putting my players through high-intensity football matches every single time. I would love to be, I don't know, Four one up in twenty minutes, and then just seventy minutes of dull, dull football as we as we hold on to a four one lead. You know, it, I'm not I'm not worried about it at all. The result is what matters, and as things stand, a three one on the first day of the season, we'll take it. We'll take it, hundred percent. We'll take it. DaCosta intercepts that really, really well done. Comes forward to Ray Boo. Ray Boo can look for a pass, maybe no. Takes the shot on. It's gone over. That's okay. That's okay. If we take a look at our xG right now, it's already at two point two six already at 2.26 it's 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 sky high we're playing so much better than we did at the end of last season the trick is and we keep it going now i'm going to stop talking about the season and the this and that and the tactics and blah 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 let's focus on the game at hand i'm going to focus on the game we are currently playing in 3-1 now williams on the ball for afc your moving up the left hand side makes a good pass the costa that, oh, that was really, really weird. I don't know why DaCosta kind of went to win the ball, but then left it. Kind of like a decoy, you know, like a dummy. We concede. We've only let two shots go. They've both gone in. They've both gone in. You know, this is part of the, part of the game plan that I can't really, can't really have any impact on, to be honest. Um, we've done well. We've generated loads of chances, and uh, in doing that, we've scored three goals already. And it could be four here. It could be another penalty. Sweeney shoots it. It goes over. Oh, it could have been a penalty. I don't know if it would have been given if we didn't take the shot. I don't know if that's how it works. It does sometimes work like that in a uh, in real life. But brilliant from Aruisu. Okay, he's moving forward with the ball clearly. Look, we're taking so many shots. We've generated 14 shots and it's not even half time, guys. It's not even half time. Now, this is some positive play if I ever did see some. Aruisu's in an odd position there. I don't know what he's doing over there. Now, they're moving forward on the ball. Takes a long shot and I don't really mind if you're going to take super long shots like that. Not really a problem. Quite high up the pitch now. Let's see if this is a Yule highlight or if we're going to nick the ball high up the pitch. Yeah, good work rate there. Good effort. Burn on the ball in the midfield. Plays it forward. Plays it across. Nice. But DaCosta makes a lovely tackle. And here we go. We are on the attack. Send it. Wusu's going. Send it. No. Okay, fine. Sweeney on the ball instead. Sweeney looks really like a tall player, doesn't he? Whips that one in to Boo at the back post who can't quite get there but does reclaim it on the second bounce. Plays it inside. Awusu shoots. It's blocked. Gone out to Sweeney. Back to the Costa. Back to Awusu. Shoot it again. And it's straight at the keeper that time. Straight at the keeper that time. Another chance though. Not too long after. 3-2 is not enough of a lead for me to say, yeah, you know, we'll chill out. We'll play defensive. No, no, no. Not yet. But basically, I think the rule is going to be Oh, steal it. No, don't let him go. Get back. Get back. You can get back. Yeah, well defended. Who was that? I think that was Isaac, but I'm not quite sure. I think it was Isaac who chased back really hard there. Made sure that if if the UL attacker was going to get a shot away, it wasn't going to be easy. And there we go. Fraser Papriel carrying an injury makes it 4-2. It's not even half time, guys. It's not even half time. <laughs> It's absolutely insane the amount of goals, the amount of chances we've generated in this first half alone. Our XG is gonna be is gonna be sky high. But it's only 3-2. No, sorry, it's only 4-2. Um, I'm not gonna change things up. If we get a three-goal lead, then I will change things up. 
But a two goal lead, it's not enough for me. It's not enough for me just yet. I want a little bit more. I think it's probably a good idea to take Papril off just because, because he's kind of carrying that injury. He's already scored with 4-2 up. So I can I can afford to make one change, I would say. Um, and yeah, I think that's just a sensible move. Just a sensible move. Oh, Ray Boo stolen it. And he's, oh, good save. Good save, but another chance, another chance. And that was probably part of the high press that we're, we're um, enforcing, you know. Uh, don't, don't just sit back entirely. You know, if they do want to have some possession, that's fine. But we'll still press them a little bit higher up the pitch. Try and uh, try and ruin their day, you know, rather than just sit back and, well, hit you on the counter every single time. Santos have gone 2-0 up. Well played to them. Rebu on the ball. Maybe look for a pass back out wide here. No, we've gone backwards. That's all right. Santos are actually 3-0 up. Awusu over the top. Shoot it. Shoot it straight at the keeper. Straight at the keeper. We're down to second on goal difference then because Sandhurst are three goals up. We're only two goals up. But if we do score a goal, we'll then have more goals scored. So we should go. Oh, Boo is through. He's in. He's in. He's in. It's in. It's three goal difference. It's a great goal. It's actually, I think, is that five? I think that's five goals um, by different Caprio, Boo, Odequoia, Isaac, and Russell Short. Yeah, five different goal scorers. Would you believe this? I don't know if you would believe this, guys. Ray Boo, I think he might have been with this club, with our club. Since season one, and I've never given him a chance. I've never given him a chance to play. I feel so, so bad. He's on He's on goal again. He scored another one. <laughs> he's already scored another one. He's having a great time of it. But I don't think I ever gave him a chance. We take a look at his career stats. He was with us. He was with us in our first season, and he never played. He played four non-competitive games. He scored twice off the bench. He scored once off the bench in season two, and then he played only one game off the bench in season three. Now he is actually playing in league games, and he's already scored twice. So, yeah, I'm an idiot. I've just had this kind of golden player who I've not been playing. Well, maybe not golden player, but a player that clearly can do well with this system, a strong player who's able to score goals, and, uh, and I haven't been using him. Now, I probably should revert to the contain tactic here, now that we've got a four-goal gap. But, if I do that, is there going to be less chance for Ray Boo to get his hat-trick? I would love if he could get a hat-trick. So let's see where this attack goes. De Costa on the ball. Back to short. Plays it forward. Odekoye is going to look for it. Can't find it. Headed out, and now maybe AFC Euler on the attack. Oh, okay, I thought De Costa might win that. Wasn't able to. You all are attacking. Oh, again, I thought De Costa might win that, but wasn't able to. Rand's passes. Oh, and they've missed. That's probably a bad miss. Okay, with not long to go, we're going to swap to the contain tactic. Sandhurst have scored as well. Oh, my word. They're 4-0 up. 4-0 up now. I'm going to wait. Good block. Yeah, lovely block. And kind of clearance and block all in one there. Oh, Brands is through. Gonna, oh, it's a goal. Yeah, that had to be a goal. Sibanda has scored for AFC Yule. And it's not great that we've conceded three goals, but we've scored six. Our, our chances generated just is... it. The balance is there, clearly, so it doesn't really bother me. Odekoya on the ball. Back to Da Costa. Da Costa maybe look for a pass. Doesn't need to. Shoots it off the bar. Ray Boo with the hat trick. There we go. There we go. It's a hat trick on debut. Oh my word. That's incredible. We've scored seven goals in our first game. We have scored seven goals in our first game here. I think we can take Rebu off. We'll bring on we'll bring on Sunderman. And we'll make one more change. Let's just make it at the back. Rothorn in for DaCosta just to give just to give players a rest who have clearly Clearly done well today. Ray, what a performance. A hat-trick on debut. That'll be the title of the video, guys. Hat-trick on debut. And uh, we will only... This will be the only game we play in this episode. 
like I say, we're going to play the games a lot slower than we have been in the first few seasons, which does mean we may only play one or two games an episode and the season will progress slower. But hopefully it means that it will be far more cohesive. You know, the season's progress and a little bit more. Um, I don't know. We can have a little bit more engagement with the comments and stuff like that. So like I'm making not just making all the decisions on my own, you know, I'm I'm also listening to comments and seeing what other people think. We've conceded another goal here. This is a uh, getting a bit silly here. There's only there's only two minutes to go or three minutes to go. And it's seven five. This is literally a rugby score now. Um, there we go. That'll be full time. Twelve goals in this first game is, I mean, it's unbelievable. I'm not happy that that happened, I suppose, but we were 4-2 in the first half and 3-0 in the second half. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Clearly, when we went into the contain, it became, became dangerous. We started to invite pressure. So... Maybe in the future we won't even use the contain that much, but we'll, we'll see. We'll go game by game. We can't judge off one game, obviously. But nonetheless, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that we conceded five at the end there. Literally, I have the mentality with a lot of sport that you want to play the way you want to play. You want to build foundations to play a certain way, like in anything, like rugby. Uh, you want to probably build on defense. Make sure your defense is strong as it can be, and then you can earn the right to play and attack a little bit more i would say the same with football but the only counter to that is okay you can score five we'll score seven and that's the same with rugby that's the same with cricket you know like okay you might score a hundred runs of 75 deliveries fine i'm gonna score a hundred of 50 and then i've got 25 de deliveries spare you know like of course, cricket, the risk of getting out and stuff like that, there's so much more to it. But the same with rugby. Is it, fine, you can score three tries, we'll score five. You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and the, that, that's, that's, that is something that is still a thing in sport. You know, we've, we've conceded five. It's not great. We scored seven. So I, I couldn't care less. <laughs> Reboo. What it may even be Bo, I'm not quite sure, but I'm saying Ray Boo and I, I don't mind it. I don't like it. I, I don't I like the name. We made four debuts in that game, four debutants in that game. Ray Boo was one of them. Bowden, Thomas, and Sweeney. So the back line also made a lot of debuts. Bo in top form. Ray Boo, Boo, Boo in top form. We're second in the table just because Sandhurst scored four goals, but I mean, it's incredible. 12 goals. 12 goals. Let's do the press conference, guys. What did you make of it? What a game. What a game. Um, yeah, I mean, he's, he takes our penalties. I'm incredibly thrilled with Ray Boo. Yep, lovely stuff. Dallas Isaac scoring as a youngster is great. We did also, we also made a promise to play more of our youngsters. Dallas Isaac is one of that. Paul Thomas is one of that. We have got youngsters that we're going to have to give more minutes to. Um, how far do you think he can go? Very top. Incredible. Um, how good was that goal? I'm not going to... I don't I don't even remember if I'm being honest. Um, are we likely to see more? Yeah, probably. I mean, Nethercott doesn't actually play right mid. As in right midfielder. Because I don't have a player that plays right midfielder. Um... They all seem to play attacking right midfielder, which is uh, <laughs> which is interesting tactically, I suppose. Um, oh, what's this? Oh, 7.0. Okay, so that's all that's showing. 7.0, 5.0. Right. See the point O though. Do that. There we go. Okay, so I do, yeah, I want to be able to see these these stats here. They are actually a little bit more important for me, I would say. Um, if I go on to the tracks, they've, I've got appearances and stats in there as well. Um, yeah, this is the important view for me. I actually do think this is the important view. So the reason I've got this view here is so that over time I can see a little bit more, I don't know, who plays 
better on the consistent basis, you know, on the regular. For example, team goals is in general going to be how is the team scoring when this player is in the team. Uh, teams con goals conceded, obviously, when we, we took players off, they're going to have different numbers um, than than others let's quickly move that across so i can also get the ratings in as well so this is an average rating i think that'll go for across the season so isaac actually didn't have a great game probably because we were conceding goals and the same for mark foden there um but you see a wusu didn't have a good game 6.8 6.8 that's really really interesting really interesting actually because we played so well as a team um so there you go. That, that's why I've changed the views and I've kind of added a little bit more just so we've got a little bit more detail as we try and progress through the seasons. Guys, that'll be the end of today's episode. I know we only played one game. I know I was chatting a lot. I promise I will try not to chat so much. It was just because it was a season introductory video. But we played our first game. We absolutely, well, it was a great game. It was an incredible game. 7-5 is just a bonkers result. But our XG of 4.2 against the 2.7. 29 shots for us, 17 for them, 13 on target. Like, it's crazy. And somehow, we also had a bit of possession, <laughs> which is great. Guys, thank you so, so much for watching today's episode. I really, I really enjoy the Football Manager videos. Um, it's a game that I can literally sit in my chair, click a few buttons, and... You know, I don't have to worry about really, really focusing, hyper-focusing on gameplay. It's a bit like Cricket Captain, and uh, I really, really do enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I shall catch you next time.